today I'm going to show you how to make this fabulous pin board for the craft shed project. It's super easy to make and you can have so much fun adding bits to the board. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so for the face of the pin board you'll need some cork sheet. Now this is the thinnest um, you can get, I think it's under a millimetre thick. You can get it thicker but try not to go too thick because the texture of the cork is too large and it won't look in scale. So cut um, a piece of cork measuring 59 millimetres by 44 millimetres and that's two and three eighths of an inch by one and three quarter inches. Of course you can make it um, bigger if you like, but if you're making it for the craft shed this, this is a sort of suitable size for hanging on the back of the door. And also cut a piece of 0.8mm um, wood to that same size. And I'm using wood rather than card because the card will tend to sort of curl um, as the glue dries. And also the wood gives us a more solid base to glue the wooden frame to. Okay, so apply glue to the wood. I've just dispensed some here onto a piece of card. I'm applying it with a cocktail stick. And make sure you get it right along the edges, like that. And then attach the cork. Make sure it's lined up with the board. and then press it into place. And so that the um, wood doesn't curl up as the glue is drying, you can just weigh that down. So just put something on top that isn't going to stick. And that will then dry nice and flat. Okay, so once that part has completely dried, we can construct the frame. And you'll need a piece of three millimeter or one eighth of an inch square strip and to cut it I'm using a mitre block and saw and this is one that's designed to sort of hook over the edge of the desk so I'm just propping it up here on this eraser just so I can keep within um, camera shot so just begin by cutting a mitre at one end side and then put it um, beside the frame so that the sort of um, where the mitre starts is right on the edge of the frame there and then just draw a pencil mark at the bottom edge of the frame and then that's where you want your opposite facing mitre cut to go so you want it to go like that so there's the bottom of your frame and the mitre will go across like that. So let's put that one in and do that one. Like that. And then the mitre that you've just cut can join along the top there. Let's turn that bit over. Like that. And then you'll do your second pencil mark at the end of the top bit of frame. So we're just sort of working our way round and that will go that way. And I always um, sort of draw the way it will go onto the piece of wood because I don't know about you but mitre joins can be quite confusing. Um, so just draw it on there and then you'll know as soon as you put it into the block which way you need to cut it. there and then again the mitre in the strip and that'll become our next corner and then make another pencil mark at the bottom and cut again that way When you come to measure that bottom piece, you can just push that side piece out of the way, make your 
pencil mark. And then make your final cut. Okay, so we can now glue the frame around the actual board. So apply glue along one long edge of the board and then glue that to the first frame side so that the mitres are overhanging at each end. Press it all down. You might still have a little bit of curving um, in your board. This will straighten it all up. Press that into place. And then you can apply glue along the top of the frame and onto that um, first mitre corner. If you've got any sort of little bits of furry bits from your saw, you can just sort of cut those off um, with your craft knife without cutting into the angle. Like that. And then the same again along the side. Press it all flat. Just get another cocktail stick and remove any excess glue. Just try not to damage the cork there as well. And then the final piece. Press it all together. Once that's dried, I'll erase those pencil marks. And then we can start to decorate it. Okay, so once the glue had dried, I erased any sort of visible pencil marks, and then I've been all the way around with a fine grade sandpaper all along the front, especially the corners, and that will hide any little sort of tiny gaps you've got between the mitre joints. And then I've gone all around the outside as well, and very gently just rounded over these edges. And you just get a neater appearance that way. Okay, I'm now going to um, decorate it, and just really to give you some ideas of what you can do with yours. And I'm going to do it as a series of images, which will be a lot clearer for you to see. I'm going to use my pin board as sort of part memo board and part design board. So here I've printed off some pieces of wallpaper, the same ones that I used in the little wallpaper box we made. I've got some pages from a Laura Ashley catalogue, a copy of an invoice, um, the little leaflet out of my Dremel toolbox. I've got a label from the front of the um, stove that I bought for my doll's house kitchen. And I've just copied the front of the knife blade box. I'm going to stick everything to the board just using my normal wood glue. So I start off in the bottom corner there and I always like to curl the corners of things up as well to make them look sort of like they've been hanging there for a while. Overlap things. Try not to think about it too much, just sort of add them in as you pick them up off of your desk. Started up at the top there with one of the room pictures and a little um, wallpaper sample. Added in another room picture there and the little stove leaflet. So just sort of build it up as you go along. The front of the um, blade box I've attached there with glue but then I've just put a couple of tiny bits of masking tape on to make it look as though that's how I've stuck it on. Still build it up with another room picture there and wallpaper sample. And then I've added in some fabric. And again, choose the smallest patterns that you've got um, and some plain fabrics as well. I'm also adding in some crochet cotton to look like some little wool samples. A colour there for each sort of room colour scheme. And some trimmings as well. Here I've added on some floor samples. 
I printed this list um, using Excel and again the um, sort of script font I think it's called Sago script and I used the number 2.5 font there and then I've trimmed round it as close to the writing as possible and then I've used um, my scribe tool here to score little holes along the top just to make it look like a page torn from a shorthand notebook and that's into place down there as well some more little trimmings I've added in there little bow I scanned in my farrow and ball colour chart just the front cover and then I've cut it out leaving an extra bit of paper on which I've then concertinaed to make it look like the actual colour chart glued the top pages together so that they stay together and then also put that onto the board now for drawing pins I'm using these little electrical tacks and I used a pair of pliers out of a little jeweler's toolkit just to snip the top from each one and if you're going to use this method make sure you wear safety goggles when you're doing it because the pins will fly around as you snip them off and then you can use glue um, to sort of pop them into place on the board just put them around randomly if they've still got a little bit of a stem on the back just poke a hole in the board with your scribe tool and then you can just pop that in there like you would with a normal drawing pin or we'll keep a few just to put in the board at the top as spares and there is the completed pin board now getting those um, little gold drawing pins into place is really tricky so you might want to use, um, I think I've seen nail art stickers, little tiny gold dots um, on eBay and places like that. So you could use those. Another thing I've done is make some really fine strips using FIMO um, in pastel colours. And then you can just cut them once they're sort of baked um, into tiny little circles and use those sort of pastel coloured um, pin heads. But I really like these sort of brass drawing pins. So if you can persevere with it, then do. And you can use a cocktail stick um, or even the end of the scribe to help you sort of manoeuvre them into position. And once you've got the back bit in that little hole, then you just need to press them in with your thumb. And you're done. OK, so what I've done is stuck just a strip of 1.5 millimetre thick um, wood on the back, 1 16th of an inch, just slightly shorter than the frame and then we can use that to stick it um, to the door of the craft shed just because nothing ever really sticks flat against a wall um, so it will just have a little bit of a tilt at the top which will make it look more realistic. So I'm going to bring in the craft shed and we'll put that into place. Okay so apply glue along that um, strip that you've just applied and I'm also just going to put a little bit along the bottom um, of the frame there and that will stick it into place at the sort of bottom as well like that and then I'm going to put it so that that strip is just under that sort of top strip on the actual back of the door and that will then make sure that it's straight and I want it just a little bit more this way because I want to add a, a door handle there. So I'm not going to centralise that completely. Push it all down. Make sure that that looks straight. Let's get another cocktail stick there and go along that top edge. Okay. I'll just pop the filing cabinet back into place. And then when I was printing off that um, farrow and ball colour chart, I just copied um, one of the pages in there as well. And I've just put that at the back there um, next to the paint, the varnish sample um, colour chart. So I'm sure you'll come up with loads of ideas for your pin board. And they're such fun to make. You can have them as full or as empty as you like. You might just want a couple of pieces stuck on there. But I think it's more fun to try and add as much as you can and fill up all the little gaps. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. 
If so, please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. And give the video a thumbs up as well, that would be really appreciated. And if you want to be notified whenever I upload a video, you can hit the notification button as well. But for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.